Okay, welcome guys. I'm gonna get right into the stock market technical analysis. Try to point out everything that I'm seeing really this morning and really everything that I saw. So the private member group, if you guys aren't part of that, I, you know, I think there's a lot of value there. I can't convince you to just join up. But what I can say is I've been in there all morning and uh, just ask any one of the members how we did this morning. We, caught, we you know, I saw that pop and the rally. We added to our shorts, uh, and you know, things dumped. So, ask any member. Just you know, l read the comments. Members will tell you. And at the end of the day, I priced it so that it's basically a no-brainer. All right, I put it at five bucks. I could have put it at twenty bucks a month. I mean, I still think that'd be worth it in my mind because I mean, we're making a killing with these trade ideas. I know I am. But uh, I just priced it five bucks because it's not really going to move the needle. But you know, I don't want to give my time or, or you know away for free. So join up if you're interested. Link in the description below. There should be a lot of value there. If not, you can always cancel it. Big deal. And then you know the course that I put together teach you get, teaches you guys the baseline knowledge of how I'm putting these trades together. How you know what basically I know I get a lot of praise for getting the trades right. And that's cool because, you know, I have experience doing it. But if you're interested in learning how to do this yourself, because, you know, eventually one day I'm going to get bored of this YouTube thing and just quit doing it, um, then take the course. OK, that's the baseline. That's kind of the, the where, you, where you should start out at. If you haven't taken the course and you see how I'm trading and see how I'm putting the things together, take the course to reaffirm that that knowledge, that skill set. Link in the description below. Again, I price that affordable. I'm not giving it away for free. I don't give my time away for free, but I also don't give worthless content. All right, there is value in that course. Take it if you haven't. I, I think there's some. You know, I think you're missing out if you haven't. Link in the description below. All right, enough of that. Let's uh, get into the trades. I'm going to show you guys exactly what I'm seeing, what I saw this morning, and where I think things are going. Okay, on the daily chart, and this is kind of messy because I've been in here just you know charting stuff like crazy. But what I want you to focus on is the June lows right here. This is where you had a bear market rally. Those June lows are about uh, 269, 270. Really key level for the market right now, especially triple Qs. And the market is triple Qs because the triple Qs is Apple, Microsoft. It's the big, heavy weighted uh, Fang stocks. And where those go, the market goes because they just they're weighted so heavily in the spy and on and everything that if they sell off, everything sells off. It doesn't matter what anything else is doing. If the Fangs are selling off, then the market will sell off because of the weighting. All right, it's just a math equation. So that's a key level, 270. Now we're below it now, all right, on the daily. Um, and, you know, I think we're heading lower. Now, if I go down to the hourly, this is really where we need to start narrowing down our price action because this is going to give us kind of the near-term um, play. On the hourly, I see a potential bear flag forming uh, on, the, on the hourly. You can see we're kind of moving. There's your flagpole, and we've got this kind of flag price action here, which would probably set us up for a move if I kind of take the the flag and roll out. It, it's setting us up to move down to about 249-ish. If we get down there, we're going to take out the, the most recent lows and we should just head right down to my target of, of uh, 238. All right. And I go to the daily here, point it out <clears throat> right down there. We'll be close enough. It should sell right down to there to find some sort of support. Okay. So that's what I see on the hourly. Um, also, let's see here. If I get down to the more granular time frame, like the 15 minute, okay, look, you had a gap to fill right here. Today, um, you know, there's there's been a lot of choppy action, but look, we keep getting rejected at this 265.60, and basically, we today we gapped up right up to that 265. Boom, they sold it down within the first hour. Then counter trend rally, and they ripped it right up. But where did they rip it to? Right there at 265.60. That was a short opportunity, and this is in the private group. I told everyone, okay, guys, you know, if you want to add to a short, this is where it makes sense to do so. You don't have to, but this is the objective area and probably the last objective area we get before we get that final move down to 238. So that's where, you know, that's that's what I pointed out in the private member group. If you took that short or added to it, you know, that would have given you, that's a two, I don't know, even from where we're at now, percent and a half or so pretty quickly. 
Um, and yeah, so that's it on that one. And then if you go to the NASDAQ futures, I always like to line the futures up, but if I go there, you'll see here, I gotta go to the hourly. But look, we had some resistance right here at 10,998. I pointed this out in the private member group this morning saying, okay, if we rally, we sh we're likely gonna get rejected at this resistance point here. And I pointed it out clearly well in advance. Sure enough, you can see we spiked into it and boom, rejected. So that's a rejection so far. Whether it sticks, you know, throughout the day, we'll have to see. Maybe there's another rally today. Um, again, I, I won't put it past the fact that there could be another rally because if I go back to the triple Qs and if I look at the hourly, it does look like we're kind of bear flagging. So maybe they want to rally it up and just kind of keep this flag today. You know, I don't think we're going to break down today and, and you know, we'll, we'll probably hold the flag, but I'm positioned short. I'm not going to be covering my shorts, all right? Uh, the price action and the rejections that we saw at key levels tells me that the shorts, the sellers are in, in control and we should continue lower. The other thing I want to look at, and I talked about this in the private group, was Apple. So Apple, if I look at, well, we go to the daily here. Um, we have some support here at about 138 and we're starting to break that now we'll see if they can recover that today but that's kind of a key level of support if i roll out you can see you know it's kind of messy but look look there there's a resistance resistance popped it a little resistance support 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 so it's a key level so whether we you know whether we break it or not, I don't know. But if we do, it's going to tell me that, okay, we're likely heading lower in Apple. And if Apple goes lower, the market's going lower. It's just the nature of the heavy weighting that Apple holds. Okay, I'm going to flip over to the weekly chart on a couple of these other FANG stocks. Just want to reiterate my point. And a lot of the price action to the downside is already taking place. So it's definitely like, you know, it's... I'm not telling you about a, a new trade idea that I've had. I'm just reaffirming the trade idea that I've been telling you about for a while. And we're cashing on these trade ideas. So um, Amazon, the weekly chart, boom, big weekly breakdown from the previous support level, 101.50, continuing to break. So again, bear market, all right? And Amazon, if you roll back to basically the beginning, 1997, this is the bull trend that Amazon's really been in since it came public and this is major stuff happening so there's your weekly chart all right and as i roll out look you broke we had a sell signal right here that was your first weekly breakdown i talked about it at the time we did a back test and you know that's all she wrote so look if amazon's doing this they're you know the market can't hold up with these big thing stocks just going into major bear markets. And this is just getting started. Uh, and then let's see here, Google talked about this one the other day, weekly breakdown. So rolling out, this is, this is Google. So Alphabet's another way that has a longer history, but they, when they split their company or change their name, but there's Goog, big weekly sell signal there. So again, just another, uh, you know, another, nail through the heart of the bulls. And then Microsoft has an uptrend line on the weekly chart that started in 2016. It has two uptrend lines that I've been watching, but that's one of them. And boom, that one had a sell signal a couple months back. And you know we're breaking that support level at 228.80, continuing lower. We need some sort of a monster recovery today to save these things. Maybe it happens, but if it doesn't, you know, then you know, it's going to be a clear statement on where this market's going. And then Microsoft, it's longer term trend coming back from 2009. So basically the entire rally since the Great Recession is down here. You got support, support, support. And I think that's where we're heading long term is down here. All right. That's about 130. So that's what I got on that one. OK, let's get into some of these individual stocks um, that we talked about First solar. Again, higher risk stock um, because it's just it just is the nature of this stock. But let me show you what I got um, on the five minute chart. So we had a little support right here. You can see a couple reactions. One, two, and I th and I told everyone in the private group that you know we'll probably get a bounce, a minor bounce right here. 
So they undercut this level and then boom, snapped it above. So yeah, that's pretty bullish. I mean, in general, just it's bullish for a reaction or a bounce. So, um, you know, on the five minute, we maybe get a little bounce. If I go to the hourly though, look, negative divergence. So all this price action is divergent highs, all right? That tells me that there's a lot more downside than just this little five minute chart is leading on to. So probably get a little bounce here and then continue lower. Also, if I go to the daily, all right, you can see this big high, the spike high we just made on the daily is a divergent high. Look, there's your comp, see my, the drawing I had, that's basically, that's what I was looking for was, does this turn down? And sure enough, it's already started to turn down on the RSI. So we have negative divergence on the daily. That tells me, you know, a lot lower. So for me, my target still remains 78. There's a gap to fill right there. A move down into that gap is, I, I feel like, pretty likely, and that's what I'm trading it for. So uh, I'm not going to cover my short into the weekend. I'm looking for this to continue lower. And even if I roll over to the weekly chart on this thing, you, you can see we have negative divergence. Now, it's not fully confirmed because the RSI and the, and the PPO are pointed up, but it's confirmed on the daily and you know it again if we start to sell down it'll get confirmed on the weekly the weekly is a pretty obtuse chart so it's not really it's longer term stuff you know we're looking for a move down to fill the gap okay so back to the five minute on this thing maybe you get a little more upside a little more bounce but from my perspective it's going to roll over and the next sell signal it doesn't make sense to short right here but if you break you start breaking this or even take out the lows right here, then that would be your next sell signal. And that's going to signal a move down to, oh, let me mark it out. It's right about um, some support right here at about 143.75. So I think we head down there next after we break this little trend line. Okay, Ford. So Ford's not a screaming great short. It's kind of a defensive stock. They pay a dividend. So it's just kind of icing on the cake for me. I apply most of my my uh, capital to the shorts that are kind of growth stocks that are really gonna fall. But the chart told me it was a decent short, so I took a, you know I took a trade on it, some of it. If I look at the daily chart here, we've got an uptrend line right there. We broke the trend. We're back testing today right there. No change in the technical posture of that. No real divergences on the daily. So for me, it's not like a huge short, but I think we got some more downside here. But look at the hourly. There's your trend line. Negative divergence is clean and clear on the hourly chart. So there's your trend line. We broke, kind of back tested once, back tested twice, selling down. So I'm looking for this to roll over and, you know, yeah, looking for lower prices. Probably down, you got some support at 12.76, but possibly down here at 11.14, or maybe even lower. So in general, just lower. It looks good that nothing's changed technically. Okay, let me get to gold and gold stocks because I told everyone in the private member group that this is probably as a group, as a whole group, they look like probably the some of the best long setups, long trades right now. Not actionable on all of them yet, but definitely just as a group look like really good setups for long trades. So I want to point out what I'm seeing today. So gold bullion, you've got this downward channel right here. And basically we're rallying into the resistance zone right now of that channel. So resistance right there at about 1680 kind of a big level of resistance really at 1680. We popped 1680, especially with the close above that. And for me, that's definitely a buy trigger on, on gold, okay? I think it's gonna happen because we have bullish divergence on the daily chart. So that's telling me that we're probably gonna, that we've probably bottomed actually, and we're gonna pop it, but I need to see it first. So I'm kind of holding out for that. But when I look at just, the, the chart, it's definitely continues to be bullish and constructive, just letting you guys know. So likely, you know, when we get a buy trigger, it's gonna be quick, you know, I get in on those positions, I can't let you know 
at the exact entry. You know, the private member group, I'm usually pretty quick, so I get in there and tell everyone, but um, you know, on the public videos, it's gonna be a little delayed. Um, okay, so that's gold bullion. And then I look at things like Newmont, the largest miner. So again, kind of this downward channel. I've got this marked as resistance, there's support. We haven't broken out of anything. So that's why I think there's a little more work to do. Uh, we could easily rally up to this trend line here, but um, just a little work to do. Bullish divergence on the daily chart. So it's telling me that we're gonna break out soon, but we just haven't broke out yet. So waiting for that one. Then I look at something like F and V, and it looks to me like this is already broken out and should head higher. So you've got a bullish falling wedge Okay, you've got bullish divergence right down here, big bullish divergence. So, you know, these are divergent lows there and there. And then it looks like we broke out, back tested, and boom, popping. So, earnings coming up, but to me it tells me we're going higher on this one. So, again, I'm seeing some bullish, you know, charts that you've got potential buy triggers and then others that you, you know, we have more work to do. So in general, I'm just really watching it. They're, these miners are just ramping today, um, but they all look pretty good uh, with just a little more work needed to uh, kind of firm up my buy trigger. JP Morgan, I just want to kind of cover it, you know, just because I know I've been talking about it. So look, it is a, it is a bearish rising wedge. We did break, we are back testing right here. So, you know, it's objective to short, I think, right here. But, eh, I kind of feel meh about it, to be honest. I've got, you know, these other shorts that we pointed out seem to be working. This one's kind of just, you know, not exciting. So, but if you're in it or if you're interested in it, I think it's objective to short right here. We've got negative divergence on the hourly, um, on the daily not really there on the daily. So, you know, things to look for. And again, I think a, a break below the 200 is really more conservative, but that's what I'm gonna wait for. So that's what I got on that one. I also grabbed a short in Qualcomm today on the pop. I was hoping to grab it right up here at about 109.75, but I don't know if we're gonna get that. If we do, maybe I'll add to it uh, on the daily chart. Uh, I'm looking at this to kind of move down to our uh, price target of 94, all right? There's your gap from way back here and rolling out. You've got good, re this was resistance right through here with the gap combined and with a potential uptrend line right here. They all come in together at that 94 level. So to me, that looks like a really clean target and I like it. Looking at the hourly chart, um, <clears throat> Look, you had recent bullish divergence or negative divergence right here on the hourly. So when we popped up here, we started making divergent highs right in there. And sure enough, gapping down and it should be lights out. Whether it wants to rally up here for a back test or not, uh, it it's a sell the rip stock in my mind. So that's it. I'm looking for more downside on that one. And we'll look at the VIX because if I'm right that we're gonna crash down to our final, or you know, our near-term targets, those profit targets on triple Qs that I've talked about and the other indices, we should see a spike in the VIX, all right? I'm, I'm looking for it, some sort of move where everyone's just throwing in the towel and buying put protection. We haven't seen that yet, so I'm looking for that spike potential bottoming stick right now on the daily. Uh, what you'd wanna look for is, does it close as this, as this doji? And then do we get a confirmation on um, Monday? I'm kinda thinking we do. I, I'm kinda thinking we, you know, that we gap down on Monday and really start heavy selling as we crash and, and the VIX spikes, you know? So I took some, uh, I've been adding some VIX, uh, I've been adding the VXX basically, and I added some more today at the low. I pointed that out in the private member group that I was adding some VIX right down here. So far, so good. It's rallying off that low. It's up about 4% or so, and uh, I'm going to look to hold that into the weekend, unless something changes, you know, to close the day out, but that's what I got, and again, bullish divergence on the hourly. 
So you'll see there, so that was a divergent low today and it looks like we're heading higher. So I'm gonna get the video out, drop me a thumbs up, let me know how I'm doing in the comments below. I'll catch you guys on the next one, bye.